dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Questionnaires are one of the most common data collection tools in the business, along with interviews and focus groups. You've probably completed one, or at least been asked to. Yet if you've never designed a questionnaire, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. After recently developing questionnaires for the first time, I would like to help others avoid my self-inflicted misfortune by offering some guidance. Questionnaire content. Questions and how to pick them. Firstly, you need to know what content is needed to address the objectives of the questionnaire. For example, if we were exploring the effects of self-care workshops on unpaid carers' personal well-being, we may look to the dimensions of well-being to develop our content and use subjective well-being scales. Once you've scoped out the content needed, it is useful to draw on secondary data and consider what data has or is already being collected or monitored in the area. Depending on the context, research stakeholders may already be routinely monitoring their activities, data that could be used in your project to avoid duplication and research waste. Questions and how to develop them. You may use closed, open-ended or response option questions, and it's not uncommon to use a mixture. But bear in mind the target groups and the analysis stage if the respondent doesn't understand the question, it becomes redundant and may skew the results. Also, how we wish to analyse the data should inform the content and types of questions posed. For example, what variables we want to control for, i.e. household income and isolation, and the analytical techniques used to do so, i.e. regression analysis. In my case, I use standardised questionnaires to test previously developed hypotheses that mainly included closed and response option questions. An example of a closed question would be, what is your highest level of education completed? In which the respondent could answer one of the following, secondary school, college, and so on. By adding an other option, it becomes a response option question because the respondents can put their in input, their answer manually. The majority of questions posed in questionnaires are from validated scales that demonstrate adequate reliability and validity with a representative sample. In theory, these are considered the most rigorous, but with similar dating back decades, you may find the terminology lacking cultural and contextual relevance to your research. In my opinion, and others who have done similar, it is perfectly fine to adapt scales to better reflect culture, context and comprehension. If anything, this should enhance the overall validity. But what about if you can't find suitable scales? Well, you can develop your own. This is done by firstly operationalizing complex and often vague constructs into measurable variables, for example, social value, selecting the most appropriate conceptualizations, definitions, characterizations, descriptions of the construct, and identifying the key attributes. For example, based on the description below, we can see that social, economic, and environmental security are the dimensions through which the construct social value is enabled. Taking these attributes, questions can be constructed to provide a composite measure of social value. Three variables for each construct are recommended for face validity. For example, you could ask a commissioning officer, we have considered social benefits in our commissioning of public services, in which they can answer strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, and so on. Repeating the question for economic and environmental dimensions, you can then tally up scores for a measure of social value that has been operationalized in your study. There's a great how-to video on developing scales that is way more extensive and sophisticated than I provide here, so take a look. Constructing your questionnaire. Now you have the ingredients, you need somewhere with the tools to build your questionnaire. The institution you're affiliated with will likely have a platform for such like JISC or SurveyMonkey. Even if you're unaffiliated to an institution, most platforms allow you to build questionnaires for free. Although there are limits, for example, on the number of questions you can pose and the responses you receive. In some cases, the best place will not be a specialist platform. I have found Microsoft Word to be a good tool that allows you to have greater control of the design, such as layout of questions, line spacing, and other design details that can make the questionnaire more accessible and importantly shorter. However, be aware, purpose-built platforms offer excellent analytical functions that produce information such as mean, medium, and standard deviation instantly, and also allow questionnaires to be accessed online. 
Other things to consider is the structure and flow of your questionnaire. Grouping questions into sections that are similar in content and structure, introducing sections and defining key terms will only enhance the quality. Pilot the questionnaire. Unless you're the sample, you won't know how good your questionnaire is until you pilot it. Asking people representative of the target population to complete the questionnaire and consider accessibility, things like terminology, scale, structure and format, and relevance of the questions. You may need more or less. It's perhaps the most important step of all. Distributing questionnaires. Ignoring that distribution is being discussed lastly here, it should really be considered at the outset as it will influence the design of the questionnaire. You can use email, postal, QR codes, app, website, physically in person and phone calls to get your questionnaire out there. Although you should always consider the population you're trying to reach and the ethics and bias inherent in your sampling procedures. For example, online distribution may exclude people without internet access. There is also some advice on steps to consider that precede designing questionnaires that I haven't covered in this post, so please do check them out. Thanks for reading or listening. Ta. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.